If you're asking yourself what this is, it is the ball from Katsumari Damacy, you know that game where you roll stuff up and you end up rolling cities and your ball gets bigger and bigger and bigger. That game that you tangentially know, uh, this is what we are making, a Katsumari Damacy ball, uh, which actually proves to be quite a challenge to model. So we're going to be doing this procedurally, and also the uh, shading is also going to be procedural. So, let's model this thing. Uh, we're going to use geometry nodes because it's kind of a complicated mesh. Um, and for this, what I want to do is I basically want to have a sphere with a kind of system of bulbous things sticking out on it. And we'll talk about that. So starting off with the sphere, I'm going to do something a bit weird. I'm going to subdivide mesh a couple times, uh, which seems like a weird thing. Like, why am I taking this cube and subdividing it? We are gonna make a cuboid, a sphere with the topology of a cube. This is useful so that we have more even distribution and we don't have poles uh, for when we actually move the things. So subdivided a bunch of times to turn it into a spheroid. We are gonna set position by the position and then all I have to do is send this through a normalization. Uh, and this creates a sphere again, again with the topology of a cube, right? If we did a sphere, uh, you can see it has these poles on the top and bottom that I don't want. Uh, so let's do another division. Um, and now the next thing is I want to add the bulbs. Uh, to do this, we are going to first of all scatter. We're not really gonna scatter points on the surface because they need to be at equidistant points from each other. But instead we're gonna define where those points are using an icosphere. So if you can imagine, each point on this is going to define a bulb and you can have more bulbs or fewer bulbs, whatever. Um, I'm going to use this, and if we now use a geometry proximity node and say look at the points and find how close they are to the icosphere, uh, this is going to give us a gradient right here uh, that we can use for the bulbs. So uh, what am I going to do now? I'm going to set position, uh, let's grow this thing, in other words offset by the normal, so it's just going to grow outwards, and I'm going to say don't grow outwards everywhere, but instead scale this effect by this uh, distance gradient, uh, which kind of creates this interesting shape because it's going to uh, do nothing here. And then as it goes outwards, it's gonna grow um, and it's gonna have these lines of equidistance. Uh, we need to fix this a bit to look like bulbs. So first thing with the map range node, I'm gonna take the zero to one and flip it to one to zero. So we have actual things popping out instead of going inwards. Um, second of all, I'm just going to modify this so it's not taking up the entire sphere. So this is going to be kind of our scale. And we can multiply, and I know you can do this in the map range, but I'm intentionally keeping this uh, zero, or 1 to 0 here uh, for a moment, uh, for a reason you'll see soon. Um, so I'm going to scale this with a multiplication, and now to get the correct shape, uh, all I'm going to do is I'm going to use an RGB curves. And now you can see why I kept it 1 to 0, because RGB curves takes 1 to 0 input. So you can see as I reshape this, I'm getting kind of a flat bulb effect. Uh, you can get fancy here. Uh, like you can uh, have it kind of curve in like this. I'm gonna add more geometry to this so we can actually see that. Uh, you can do something fancy like that. I'm just going to do something like this. Okay, and let's take down the scale so they're not so uh, large. Um, so there you go. That's how you model this thing. Again, if we were to grow the radius of this thing, it would change where the bulbs are because it's evaluating distances differently. You can add more bulbs to create uh, this shape, which I feel like is a tutorial on its own. It's like how to make a blackberry or a blueberry or something. Uh, we're going to go for something like this. And uh, now let's do the shading. Um, and for the shading, I definitely want to have this distance gradient from uh, before and bring that over. So I'm going to store named attribute, bring over this distance, and I'm going to call it distance. I know, very fancy. Uh, finally, uh, for this, we are just going to set material. So what we do in the material editor actually shows up. So in the material editor, which is really the shader editor, uh, bring in this attribute using an attribute node. So it's called distance in this case. That's what I called it. And you can see uh, we have this uh, map where it's kind of like a bunch of you know, <laughs> uh, but the center point or the uh, is black and then it radially grows outwards and then there's lines of equidistance. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create kind of bands by snapping this to the nearest, you know, one over or whatever. So just make it some number close to zero. 
And uh, to give this color, we send this through a hue saturation value node, uh, specifically through the hue, where as we color this, you can see we get this nice multicolor effect. So I'm going to go for something like this. And uh, if you want there to be more defined green regions, um, and you might not, you might like the look of this, you can also send this through a greater than node. I guess it would be a less than node. We multiply. So this creates a, a mask, basically. And I guess it is a greater than, right? No, it's a less than. Uh, we multiply by this uh, mask, and you can see this is going to uh, basically make the uh, center of it one color. Although I do like the uh, multicolor uh, version of it. Uh, so no need for this. Uh, this is the color. Plug it into the base color. View it. It's beautiful. Um, only other thing to do is we can't shade smooth. Oh, no. We can just shade smooth right here. Uh, we can shade smooth. And uh, I just want to illustrate again. Uh, we can always change the shape of this and create like weird divots and stuff like this if you want to create a cu custom Katsumari Damasi uh, thing. Uh, whatever you want. So I'm just going to actually shape it a little uh, to create something that I think looks a bit better than the original game. So I think this looks pretty good. And I like the uh, shading on this. Um, and now all you really need to do is make it roll, which I have a, a tutorial on. But there you go. That's how you model the Katsumari Damasi ball. Um, hopefully this was useful for somebody.